So this is part two. This is continuation of yesterday's lecture for lesson 1-1, one -one, which is multiplying decimals. So when multiplying decimals, you might need to annex one or more zeros to the left of the product to have the correct number of decimal places in the product. So what we're going to do is an example together. So here we have the first example. Example 3a is uh, 67 thousandths times 1 and 42 hundredths. Now, when you guys, I cannot multiply when I'm looking at it like that. I can't do that. Um, I, I, that's too hard for me to do. So I want to make sure that when I'm doing a multiplication problem, I want to write it vertically. Okay? And now when I write it vertically, I like to write the longer one on top. Okay? So here we've got 0 0.0667 times 1.42. And remember, you do not have to line up your decimals, right? So now you just multiply like normal, okay? You just multiply like normal. So here we've got 7 times 2 is 14, carry the 1, and then 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1, that's 13, carry the 1, and then 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1, 1, right? And then we want to put our placeholder there. And then we've got 4 times 7 is 28. Carry the 2. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 2 is 26. Carry the 2. And then we have 4 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 is 2. Okay? Now, you see we've moved over one, one time for the second one, and now we've got to move over again. So, you guys, we have to put two placeholders in there. Don't forget, two placeholders. So, here, now, we cross those carries out, and now we multiply one times all of those. So, we have one times seven, seven, and then one times six, six. And, of course, you don't have to multiply that first zero. So here we're going to add. So when we add, we get 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then here we have, that's 6 plus 1, that's 7, so that's 14 plus 1, that's 15, carry the 1. And then here's 6, 7, 8, and 9. All right, so now, so now we have to decide where the decimal goes, right? So how many numbers do I have behind the decimal in the first digit? Three. And how many in the second digit? Two. Two. So when we add those together, that means we need to have five numbers behind the decimal in the answer, right? So here's my decimal at the end. When I move it, we're going to move it one, two, three, four. Uh-oh, I only have four. What do I need to do? Right, I need to put another one like that, and my decimal is going to go right there. What do I do right here? Add a zero. Add a zero. What's the, what is it called when we're adding a zero? No, it starts with an A. You just wrote down the definition. Annex. Very good. We are annexing the zero. Now, another thing I told you that I wanted you to do, if you don't have a number in front of your decimal, I want you to put a zero there too. Is everybody clear? So our final answer, when we write your final answer, I'll just rewrite it again down here, 0 0.09514. With your table partners, I would like you to do this problem. I'll give you two minutes. All right. So there's your answer. Very good. So you just, and again, you guys, I, on this one, I know I said I like to put the longer number on the top, but those are just ones. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So I put the ones on the bottom so that all I have to do is just multiply by, by one each time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I just so I guess you just have to pick and choose. So here we have two numbers behind the decimal on the first digit, three numbers behind the, de the decimal in the second number. So that means we have five numbers behind the decimal point. So one, two, three, four, five. 
So we had to annex a zero here and then make sure to put that, that number in the front, that zero in the, num in the front. Very good. All right, this next ex example is the application. It says the table shows the cost of product produce per pound at a farmer's market. Mr. Gonzalez wants to buy one and 25 hundredths pounds of pears and two and a half pounds of plums. Mr. Gonzalez brought $7 with him to buy produce. Does he have enough money to buy the fruit? And then you're going to use this table. Pears cost $1.52, oranges $1.10, carrots $0.77, cents, and plums are $1.99. Now, remember I told you, when you're doing your word problems, you do not have to write the entire problem down, okay? You just need to write down the important information, okay? So before you start this problem, in your notebook, you're going to write down the important information, okay? I'm going to give you five minutes to do this problem, and then we'll get started on it. All right, so in this problem, what is the important information? Tell me one thing. Right there. All right, so here, you guys, we've got 1.25 pounds of pears. We've got 2.5 pounds of plums. What else is important? Good. He has $7. Okay, he brought $7 with him. And the question is, does he have enough money? Is that clear? Yes. Now, how much does it cost for pairs? $1.52. And how much does it cost for plums? $1.99. All right, $1.99. Now, the first thing we said we have to do is we need to find out how much he's spending on pairs. So when we do that, we are going to multiply 1.25 pounds times the number of um, the pounds, the cost per pound, which is $1.52. Is everybody with me on that? Yes. That's for the uh, pears. Then for the plums, we're going to multiply how much he wants to buy. Two dollar two and a half pounds times the cost, $1.99. And of course, like I said, I like to put the longer number on the top. So I'm going to put $1.99 up here and uh, 2.5 pounds down here. And we're going to multiply. So we're just multiplying times ones, right? So here we've got um, five, two, and one and then we're going to add here so that's zero ten that's um another ten because that's four plus four is five that's ten then we've got nine and one so now there's two numbers behind the decimal here and two numbers behind the decimal there so we need to have Four, one, two, three, four numbers behind the decimal there. Of course, we do not need our um, these trailing zeros, but we need to keep this zero because it's money, right? So we don't need those two trailing zeros. So, so the uh, money for the amount of uh, pairs he's buying, he's got to spend a dollar ninety. Is everybody clear with that one? No. So now we want to find out how much for plums. So we're going to multiply these two. All right. So here, this is our final answer for this multiplication, 4.975. Now, because we're dealing with a word problem in real life situation, you do not want to round in the middle of the problem. You need to make sure you round at the end of the problem. Is everybody with me? Okay. So we're not going to round this right here because money, remember, money stops right there. But we're going to round at the end, okay? So now, this is the cost for pears. This is the cost for plums. What do I have to do next? You have to add them together. Very good. So we've got 
4.975 plus 1.90. And remember, when you're adding decimals, you do have to line up the decimals. So this is going to be 5, 7, that's 18, carry the 1, 4, 5, 6. And my decimal comes straight down. So now this is 6.875. But because this is money, we want to round to the nearest 100. So what does that 5 tell me we have to do? So we're going to stay the same, or are we going to round up? We're going to round up. Very good. So we've got, he's got $6.88 is what he needs to spend. So the question was, does he have enough money? Yes. yes, you have to make sure you answer that too. So yes, he has enough money. Comma.